I go back to this earlier question about populism, right? Um, and and how it's fueled by people's rejection of what is, but perhaps you know without a clear of what it is that they want. And and this yearning for solution to some issues is real. I mean, it is a reality that across a very broad set of countries, I know we had a question from Brazil in the chat, you know, you've seen this in Brazil, you've seen it in the Philippines, you've seen it in Turkey, you see it in, in the US and in Western Europe. You know, even if this wave hasn't toppled governments everywhere, there's a growing number of people who are deeply concerned about their future and that uh, is, is rooted in, in, in sort of equal parts in economic uncertainty and cultural uncertainty. And, and I think, you know, um, most establishment leaders, if you want to call it that, have had very little to offer that, that truly reassures and have left the field open to these anti-status quo movements. We now see that by and large, they don't have a whole lot to offer either. Um, and while on the one hand side that might be reassuring, it, it really isn't and people will continue to look for leaders who inspire and, and reassure and give hope and who have real answers and real solutions. And I think, you know, this is a conversation largely among scholars and in business schools. I think it's incumbent upon us as, as, as educators in business schools to, to engage business leaders around those questions. They can't pretend that this isn't real. Uh, forge dialogue across different sectors to find solutions that address the disruptions that you know, AI and automation will bring that paint a real, you know, road to or path to its a more sustainable economy that saves our planet without putting the jobs of millions at risk. I mean, the, the challenges are enormous. And, and um, just because these populist projects seem to be sort of flailing doesn't mean that, that we should declare victory.